Welcome everybody, my name is Michael, and today we're discussing about Ian Bellina, a diary of a made man. Now, this guy was huge back in the ICO days. This was the man to be around, and a lot of projects, especially up-and-coming startups, getting into cryptocurrency, loved hiring Ian Bellina and his team. And actually, for In The Hash, I was there with a couple other influencers. It wasn't anything large, but Ian Bellina was the big guy there. So I met Ian Bellina in person, and he was very nice, and I think that was his assistant or whoever it was, the main guy uh, beside his right-hand man, because it was a team, it was multiple people, um, and they were in charge of getting all these promotions, and they were getting paid the big bucks. And I remember um, going through what everyone was being paid for the project. I was happy with, you know, getting paid thousands of dollars, which eventually turned into tens of thousands, but it was small bucks, small uh, compared to Ian Bellina getting what, Others told me was close to $600,000 for a couple pieces of promotion regarding the project, which that just showed me the real potential of crypto. First of all, that was insane money. I've never seen that amount of money in such a quick time before. But also, now he's getting sued by the SEC. So definitely he's swimming with the bigger fish. This guy made millions of dollars back in 2018 promoting ICO projects and Yes, just like many other larger crypto influencers, if you were promoting a lot of these projects, eventually you got in with the pump and dumps. And there was one project in particular called Spark, where supposedly he was paid over $5 million for promoting that. Which, again, if you have enough influence, there is a certain amount of people in the crypto world that are willing to part with six, seven, maybe even potentially eight figures for promotions for the right promotions are these overpriced in many cases yes but it's not usually it's not the companies that are paying for it it's the investors of the companies or it's a hedge fund or it's you know a pool or whatever the money's coming from somewhere and i remember working with crypto hedge funds that didn't care about a five thousand dollar loss for a single video to them that was nothing because they were paying an influencer five hundred thousand dollars they cared a little bit more about that but again when you're dealing with hundreds of millions of dollars it's tough to care about little pennies and dollars like that so ian Bellina is getting sued by the sec and there's controversy obviously relating to this one of the larger controversies is not about ian Bellina himself but from the sec um this is a point taken from the paperwork um, point 69, the U.S.-based investors in Bolina's pool irrevocably committed to the transaction from when, from within the United States, they sent their Ethereum contributions to Bolina's pool. At that point, their Ethereum contributions were validated by a network of nodes on the Ethereum blockchain, which are clustered more densely in the United States than in any other country. As a result, those transactions took place in the United States. And a lot of people had huge problems with this. Um, people on Twitter came out and were comparing it to, he communicated in the English language, which is most densely spoken in the United States. As a result, this crime took place in the United States. Another one was, Belina's favorite food is a hamburger, which is the favorite takeaway of choice in the U.S. As a result, this crime took place in the U.S. So one person responded, well, it can go either way. So yes, some of these... ICO projects, some of these pump and dumps, some of these crimes could have been committed outside of the U.S. However, all it takes is for one to be committed in the U.S. or within a company or using a company that is under the U.S.'s jurisdiction, and that's it. You're over. So one perspective is, yes, you've only had a couple percentage a portion of your projects that were scams end up on u.s soil so the rest is kind of plopped in there you're guilty either way and the other perspective is no matter how many projects you could have 99 projects but as long as one was committed on u.s soil that's it you are a u.s criminal so ian Bellina, as some reported is a u.s citizen uh, residing in texas but i know he's been traveling around a lot um hasn't been as active over the past year kind of a shame you see a lot of these larger channels that could have had millions of followers and you know ian bellino superman although superman had 
one of his channels reduced to rubble and then came back. There, there was a lot of people from 2017 and 18 that were big back then that you would think would be the number one. Um, but things have changed, certainly. So I think the SEC is just trying to throw whatever they think can stick. Not necessarily this, but, you know, depending on where Ian Bellina is in the world, um, he might have to deal with this. He might not. If he goes outside of U.S. jurisdiction, probably not much the SEC could do. Maybe other agencies will get involved. Uh, I have mixed feelings about this because, again, there's much worse crimes out there than pump and dumps and influencing projects and whatever. But it's the sheer amount of money that was made. The you know it was millions for sure, potentially tens of millions of dollars from these projects. But again, you know. You gotta play devil's advocate. So, anyways, that's about Ian Bellina and the SEC. The people are mainly having problems with the SEC. After all, they did do the XRP fiasco, which they lost hardcore. So maybe they're trying to make up for that now. But anyways, thanks for watching. Have a